Hello and welcome to Coding and a Cup of Java lecture number three, loop. So, so the last time when we were start talking about if statements, we had some examples where we like checked if a specific number was valid at the user time. Like it had to be uh, in a range of 1 and 31, for instance. And if the user didn't enter that properly, we might want to, to ask for a new number, but we couldn't do that for an infinity. But now we're going to talk about loops, uh, and loops is a way to to run uh, parts, of, parts of your code multiple times, the time to, to you set it to, or until something is uh, true, uh, like a spe specific condition. So let's get going. So here we are in Dr. Java, and I'm going to start with some, some coding here in the interaction pane, but in just a few minutes I'm going to write an example program. So uh, that's wrong. Um, so first of all, we're going to do a while loop here. And the syntax looks a bit like this. So, like the like when we made an if statement, we put the code that we want to put inside it uh, like this uh, between two curly brackets, like so. And all code that we put in here, all the statements, uh, will um, will will be a part of the while loop. Uh, so this is called a while loop because well, uh, it's just while here. And how it works is basically that you type while here and then you put a condition here. And at the moment I've put a very simple condition, it's just true, always true. Uh, but it can be like a combination of logical operators and uh, relational operators. So that's the same thing that we use in if statements. So uh, it just applies the same thing, the same way. It's just a Boolean value like so. And um, let's run that. So, so this doesn't really work that well because we just we will just type uh, I'm stuck help all the time and that's because well the condition uh, will always be true and as long as the condition is true it's going to run the code once again and once again and once again and so on uh, and that's why it's called a while loop so while the condition is false we're going to run this code and then we can all, of course also do a, a another type of while loop here we just uh, have the um, condition as false and when the condition is false, we'll just skip what's in the loop. Uh, so in in this case here, um, we're not going to run the code at all because the condition is always false, and therefore, well, it's just going to be done. So when it gets to the line here, it checks the condition. The condition is false, and just ignores the content of the loop itself there. Um, so that's about how it works. But it doesn't make sense in any of those uh, applications because, well. One has, has has the condition as always true, where one has the condition as always false, which, well, I guess we could use it in some ways, but I doubt it. So let's let's make a proper example here. So I'm going to use the scanner for user input, obviously, and then public class validation example. So I'm going to use this to, to allow the user to, vali uh, to type in a valid uh, username, actually. And uh, uh, a username is valid if it has a proper uh, proper length. Uh, so I'm going to go with the 3 to 16, I think. Uh, that's just the amount of characters. Um, like this. Like that. And um, uh, we need a scanner. Like always. So with a uh, uppercase S, of course, and then we uh, ask the user for that string. So persistent dot out of print ln, and then we do please enter a uh, username like so, and we tell it three to sixteen char uh, if I can spell characters like so. Um, so that's just printing and creating the scanner, and then we uh, read read the name that the user wants. So, so far so good. So at the moment we don't do much at all. We create a scanner, we tell, uh, ask the user for a username, and then we read that name. But we also give the user a restriction that it has to be between 3 and 16 characters, and therefore we want uh, to make sure that we have that uh, that length of the username. We could, like we did before, like check if name.length blah blah blah, if that's less than 3 then it's invalid, uh, or if uh, name 
uh, dot length like this is greater than 16. Then it's also invalid, and then we want, might want to also use it for another username. But like I said, it wouldn't really work because then the user can just enter an invalid username the next time and the next time and so on uh, and so forth. So we're we'll just going to use a while loop here instead. So um, use it in a similar way. So we have a condition of the same type here, but we have a while here. And then um, we can just um, type out like this. That, uh, that name is not valid. You can scream even. Um, it's too, uh, and it's either too short or too long. That's the, the ways it's, uh, well, the name can be invalid. And uh, I'm just going to actually print out which one of those it is. And I'm going to use, use the ternary operator from the last lecture, uh, at the end of the last lecture, uh, to print out uh, uh, if it's too short or too long. So it's too short or it's too long. Here you go. So we print out this part here. That name is not valid. It's too, and then a space there. And then we add either the, short, uh, the first value or the second value depending on the length of the name. So if, if the name is actually too short, so here we check if the name is too short, then we want to, to grab short there because it's the first value. Otherwise, if the name is not uh, less than three, uh, the length of the name, uh, then that condition is false and therefore we'll pick the second value. So just a little ternary operator there, there an example there. So like I said, we're checking if it's too short or too long. And if that's the case, then we basically want the user to enter another, another name because obviously it wasn't valid. So let's do this. And then we do please enter a valid one. Um, I mean, sure, we can we can print out the uh, the amount uh, well the valid uh, range again. The user obviously failed, and then we can do. Uh, we can read uh, another name from the user. So observe that this line here is almost the same line as that. So basically this part is the same there. So we don't want to declare the variable again that wouldn't work because it's the same name. We just assign it a new value where we read uh, a new word from the from the user and store that in name. And after the loop, uh, we will get hit to uh, this point here. After the loop, we'll get when uh, when the condition is finally false, and the condition is finally false when it's not invalid anymore, which is, well, when it's valid, not invalid, it's valid. So now we can print out your valid username, because when we're here in the code, we know that the uh, username is valid, and I'm just going to uh, do something like this. Um, like and now if I hit compile and it asks me to save it and I hit save and yes, there you go. Um, and let's see, there you go. And then we can run it. Like this. Okay. So please enter your username and I'm going to say uh, just an A here. And then it's going to say that name is too short. Well, that name is not valid, it's too short. Please enter a valid one. And what's going on here is basically the following. First, we, we create a scanner and up the things, whatnot. Then we read that name. Uh, and then we check if the name is valid. The name is not valid because it's too short. The length of the name is one. And one is less than three. So we get into this part here. Uh, so we print out that it's not valid. And since one is indeed less than three, we print out short. Instead, instead of long, because it's not too long. And then we ask for another one. So at the moment we're in here, waiting for the user uh, to enter a new name. So if I, if I type like a B, like, that's fine. But then it's, we're going to get uh, there again, and it's going to say once again, that name is not valid, it's too short, please enter a valid one. And we're waiting for the user once again in there. And uh, then I can type, uh, well, do something very, very long. So this is not valid, obviously. And it's still going to work. It's going to say that name is not valid. Not, but now it's going to say it's too long, just yes, because I did that ternary operator. And all of a sudden, if I type a valid one, it's going to print that out as your valid username is VSWE, because that was, was what I entered. And VSWE is um, three or 
has three or more characters, but is also not more uh, more than 16 characters long. Um, and as you can see, I added these uh, marks there, but that's a bit silly. Uh, it would be nicer, I think, to have double quotes instead. But if I add double quotes, it's not really going to understand what's going on. As you can see, the na uh, name turned red because it th thinks that's a part of the string. So um, how do we do this? We must be able to do that some way. Well, we can use um, backslash. Um, if I can click the correct key. Um, come on, there you go. And what backslash does is to set, tell uh, it that this is actually a, a character and this is another another character. So so that's one double quote and that's one double quote that we will print out. This is a double quote that defines that we start a string. This is the double quote that defines that we end a string. This is the double oops. That's the double quote that uh, means that we start a string and that's the one that means that we end a string. So so basically if we add a backslash in front of, of the double quote it's not going to uh, interpret it as the actual start or the end of, the, of, of a string. And then we do um, uh, do like that. Um, so it's, uh, print out your value username is that line, that. Um, this is not checking if it's a four to fifteen. Um, as you can see, um, I printed out a a name that um, had the length of three. And uh, therefore, it's uh, printing out that it's valid because it's valid. Um, yes, because uh, the name here is three, and three is not less than three, and therefore uh, that part is not true. But this part can be true, but it's not. Three is not greater than sixteen either, and therefore the condition will never be true in the loop, and we will never go into this invalid part here. We will uh, jump here all the, uh, directly and then print it out that that's your valid username. And the same thing goes for the upper length. If we print out 16, it's going to be a valid one. It's in the valid range. And uh, therefore, we're going to skip this right away. If we enter that right away or if we enter that later on, it's just going to skip that whenever we get a valid name there. So yeah, so, so this part in here is to, to get a... Uh, get a new new name if the old one wasn't valid. So that was that one. I'm going to I'm going to show you a bit of a bigger example here how we can use multiple loops together and also that's also going to be the start for an interaction of the next type of loop. Um, so let's get started with a new one. So this is um, uh, going to be a postpone example. That's what it's going to be called. It's going to be a simulation of the annoying like updates that your computer might do, and you can like postpone the time it uh, left until it shuts down. I'm obviously not going to write a program that shuts down the computer or anything, and I'm not going to write a program that takes hours to run. Uh, it's just a simulation to sh to show you how you can use loops and uh, how you can use multiple loops as well as uh, an example of, of um, well, an introduction, like I said, to, the, to a new type of loops. So we continue, uh, continue typing here with uh, public set of void main, like always, string brackets args, like so. And then we do, um, uh, we create a scanner, uh, like this. Here we go. And when we have that, we want to define a variable called uh, time left. So that's the uh, time left until we want to shut down the the computer in hours. So let's let's type that here. Uh, so it's it's very easy. Just the amount of hours. Well, the uh, uh, well uh, the amount of hours left to shut down like that. and then we can do uh, while time left is greater than zero. so if we have any time left we might, might want to postpone it and uh, then we can print out how many hours there are left before before shutdown and then we basically say there are uh, and then time left 
I was uh, uh, left until your computer restarts. Something like that. Uh, but like I said, this is not going to restart your computer or anything. It's just going to be like a, a, a simulation to, to, to give you an example of, of some code here. And w when we have that, we might want to get the amount of... Uh, uh, hours the user want to postpone it with um, and we you can't postpone it with a negative number and if you don't want to postpone it at all you can postpone it with with with, uh, with zero hours so I'm just going to say as long as postpone is um, is less than zero then we want to uh, uh, to get uh, the uh, uh, get the amount of hours you want to postpone it with. How many hours would you uh, like to post postpone the time with, for instance? Um, and then when we do that, we can just uh, read the amount of hours here. Postpone equals my scanner dot next. So, we, so we're basically going to check if this is going to work. Um, uh, if we have a, a positive uh, integer or a integer that is zero, if we don't want to postpone. And then we basically uh, uh, add that to the time left. And then afterwards, we also want a an hour to pass by. So then we do time left, uh, negative, negative there, to, to decrease it by one. And then we can do um, a comment here, just a comment there. One hour is passing by. So obviously, this won't... Uh, well, an hour won't pass by. It's just a simulation, like I said. So um, the counter is going to be decreased. And in the end, we can just print out your computer will restart now. Now. Right. However, as some of you might already have realized, there's some problems with this code. We can uh, compile it without a problem, so there's no syntax errors, but the computer will restart right away. We have no option to do anything at all. And the reason is, well, we start with no time left, so the computer assumes that we want to uh, restart it right away, because we don't have any time left, so we can't postpone it anymore. And even if we would be able to postpone it, we wouldn't be able to, uh, to get into this loop to postpone it, yes, because postpone is zero, and we we are required uh, to have postpone as an invalid number before we can change it. So what what we're going to do now? We could solve it by changing some initial values. So we could change this minus one to just have an invalid from the start, and we could change the time left to something else entirely. Uh, so we always start with one hour left. But what if we wanted to have a program that, depending on the thing that we have done, if we have, like, we have something very important we need, have to do, we might want to have the default time to restart right away. While we, um, while we if, it's, if it's not too important, we can say, like, all right, you want to restart, we, we're going to restart in about like five hours or whatnot. You can postpone it anyways, but still. And if we do it like that, we can't really... Uh, we can't really just set time left to one to make it sh make sure that it's greater than zero, uh, and uh, and yeah, yeah. So 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 it just doesn't really work. So we can use another loop um, that it's um, it's it's a it's sort of like the while loop. It's a bit different. Uh, it's called the do while loop, and its syntax is fairly similar, but still quite different. So instead of uh, typing the while part up here, we type it in, in the end instead, and then we just have do here to uh, symbolize that that's the start, and then we can type here system.out.println. We, we just the same thing as before, I'm stuck, help. So this is going to be an infinite loop, a loop that never ends, and um, yeah, it's just going to type I'm stuck, help all the time. There you go, and um, and we reset that because otherwise it will just continue. But however, if you do the opposite using false instead, we will see a difference like this: uh, system dot out dot print ln 
Um, and the last time it was forever alone. Now it just uh, says hello, nice to uh, see you. Uh, and this is actually going to be printed out once. The reason is uh, a do while loop. The condition is uh, checked in the end after the the loop has uh, uh, done the code inside it, and therefore it's going to run uh, the code at least once. So even if the condition is false, it's going to be uh, executed once, and that's exactly what we want uh, in the examples up here. We want you to be able to postpone the time, uh, even though we're just about to restart it. You, we want you to be able to set the postpone time, uh, even though even though you haven't entered an invalid number. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So to do so, I can just uh, cut this out there and replace it by, with with do there, and just put it in the end instead, like so. And then I can do the similar thing here. And so I cut that out, print a do there, or type do there, and then I go, go like that. So now, however, if I compile this and run it, it's probably going to work a lot better. Like this. Uh, there are zero hours left until the, uh, your computer restarts. How many hours would you like to postpone it the time with? So I can postpone it with five hours. And all of a sudden there are four hours left because also one hour passed. Uh, it was a very quick hour, but you know, I'm just stimulating things, so. Um, and then I can say, well, I want to postpone with two hours, and all of a sudden we have five, five hours left. I don't want to postpone it. Uh, postpone it with minus three hours. No, um, that's not valid, so how many hours would you like to postpone it with? And if I continue to use zero here, it's all of a sudden going to uh, tell me that my computer will restart. So here we have an example of two, two loops inside each other and also an example of the new loop, the do while loop, that checks the condition in the end and therefore will run the, the code at least once. So even though time left is not true, uh, it's false in the beginning, we're still going to run the code here. But if the uh, time left is, isn't greater than zero when we reach this point, we're going to end the loop, even if that's the first first uh, uh, loop uh, uh, we, we're going with the first lap there. So if I run this again, and um, if I'm not postponing it right away, it's going to restart the computer. So so there you go. Um, and one of the exercises in the questions and exercises um, uh, document, uh, one of, of them have a very neat solution if you just use uh, do while. It, it works pretty nice. Um, so um, one one more thing we could do if we wanted to, it would give us a bit of a different result, would be to do that, to decrease the time when we're actually having some time left. Because now we're actually going to decrease the time even though uh, even though we don't have any time left, we're still going to decrease the time left, so it's going to end up at minus one. Uh, but we could do it like this, and that would basically do so it would would uh, would check it a bit differently. But, but And of course then we would remove that line. Uh, but since we're not actually, well, an hour is not really passing by. It's tricky to know exactly what we want wanted to do. So, um, so right, that's the while loop and the for, uh, or not the for loop. The for loop we will talk about later. That's another loop. The while loop and the do while loop. But I'm now going to talk about something called break and something called continue that you can use for for loops. Um, and instead of actually introducing them in the interactions pane that I usually do, I'm actually going to write a simple um, program here and then expand it. Um, and we'll see how you can use, use the two of them. So first of all, I'm just going to do a, uh, a class here, break and continue example. So this is the program. And as you can see, I'm not uh, importing the scanner, so I don't want any user input in this example. Uh, public static void main. I call this and then string, square brackets, args, um, like that. And uh, well, one could use user input to define this number, but I'm not going to change that often at all. So it's just an example, anyways. So I'm just uh, adding a simple while loop here. And uh, each time we go through the while loop, I'm going to multiply the number there by 2. And then I'm going to print it all out. So as you can see, no, nothing called break, nothing called continue here at all. But that will come soon. Like I said, I was going to make a simple example and then expand it. 
there you go. And uh, now if I run it, it's going to print out, if we check here, it's going to print out 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. As you can see, 128 is greater than 100, but that's not the point here. Uh, the point is that 64 is less than 100, uh, 64 there, and then we, after, after that is true, we uh, decide that we want to go uh, loop it once again, and uh, then we multiply it by 2 and get 128 printed out. So, so it's totally fine that it's telling us that we have 128, even though we're asking for the number to be less than 100 here. So the condition uh, doesn't mean that we can't get a higher higher number uh, inside the loop. But but like I said, no no break, no no continue there. So uh, let's add that. Here you go. So what this does here, number mod 10. I've used it a few times before. Before, uh, it's basically going to give me the last digit. Uh, so if I have the number, let's say 352, it's going to give me two, just because that's the last digit. Um, and then I'm going to see if that's six. And if it's six, I'm going to continue like that. Um, and what continue does is that when when it's reached, it's going to um, uh, like abort the current uh, loop. It's not going to break break out of it. So now you might uh, might realize what the break does. But it's just going to go back to the condition up here. And if that condition is still true, it's still going to loop. It's just going to abort where it is at the moment and go back. To the condition itself. Um, so at the moment, if the last digit is six, then we want to abort and not print it out. Uh, let's see how that looks. And run that code. There you go. So now we're going to get two, four, eight, thirty-two, sixty-four, and one twenty-eight. As you can see, we don't have sixteen here, but we're still we're still multiplying eight by two, and then we multiply sixteen by two uh, to to go past sixteen. By, by by that one, so we do number time times two, but uh, if if the last digit, digit is six, then we don't want to print it out. And now you might say like, well, we could just do uh, if number mod ten is not equal to six. Uh, that's not six. Uh, then print out the number. And yes, that's totally true. You can do that uh, in this case, but. Let's let's uh, make the make this a bit more advanced. So um, if if I do so, first of all, we want that to be be the case. Then we want uh, then we also want what do we want? We want uh, number uh, divided by ten uh, mod two equals zero. So what we want here is um, is that if the second digit, so we're getting the second digit and all we get the rest of the digits, we remove the, uh, the first one, well, the lowest one, um, and then we check if that's uh, even. So if it's even, then we want to exit out. I don't know why, I don't know why we would want to do that, but otherwise we might want to print like system.r.println uh, yes, the same message. So these, this example is a bit ridiculous because there's no real point to it, but I'm not just showing you how the things works. Um, and if we don't want this condition to be here, um, that we wouldn't want it to print it out while we're doing that thing, uh, but we still want to have this message here, then we would want, uh, then we would want to put that one there and this one here as well. So we need to put it in two different locations uh, that we printed out otherwise. Uh, like that, if we didn't have anything here. So, so basically, as we make more and more complex programs, it's not just as easy as making an if statement. Like, if this is this is the case, then we want to print it out. Then we want to do this, and otherwise we just want, don't want to do anything. But, but when it gets more complex, it's, it's quite easy to just uh, well, if the if if we get to this point where we had to continue, then just abort and go back to the to to the condition again. Um, so um, we will see better examples of that later on, but the continue will basically go back to the condition, and if the condition is still true, then we're going to run it once again. But yeah, I'm going to remove this extra part of the example there, and go back to this, um, there you go.
So that was the continue one, but I already hinted about what the break one did. So um, before we're going to do that, I'm just going to show, uh, probably I'm going to change the start number to three, and then we're going to run that. Uh, and as you can see now, we're missing both six and 96. So we jump from 48 to 192 directly. And we also skip the first one, which is six, just because we're, we're, we're reporting here, going back to the condition and, and running it once again there. Um, but here we go. Now let's check the break one. So if I go like this, if um, number divided by 10 equals four. So now I'm checking if uh, the, uh, so it's the same thing that I just did. Um, I'm getting the, the rest of it, so I'm removing the first digit. So if if our second digit and re well the rest the rest of the digits are are equals to four, then we want to break out. And what break breaking out basically means is that we completely uh, ignore the rest of the loop. So we jump down back here. Uh, where it ends. So we don't want to go back to the condition and run it again. We just want to get out of here. Um, and at the moment I'm doing so if we can find a 4 uh, uh, at the rest of, of the number, which I have here, 48. So since um, that one equals 4, it, it should break out there. And if we run the code, we'll see, uh, we'll see that. And this. So we get 12, 24, 48. We don't get one uh, 92 or whatever it was, uh, but we get 48. Why do we get 48? Well, uh, it's the same thing that we had before. When we have 24, 24, it's not true in the, in this scenario here. Uh, 24 doesn't have a 4 as the 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 tens, so it's not like 40 or whatnot. Um, and uh, then we multiply with 2, we get 48, and 48 doesn't end with a 6. Uh, the the uh, yeah it basically doesn't end with six and therefore we print out 48 but then when we get hit the next time then we have 48 as the number and therefore uh, we have 40 something ish and therefore we're going to break out and ignore the rest of the loop so right um, I have a few minutes left so I'm going to uh, give you a last example so it's a bit bigger we're going to use a uh, a break in there. We're going to use some random numbers. Actually, it's quite nice to to play around with those. And we're also going to use the while loop uh, in a in a ma in a sense that we can actually use the next loop that I've mentioned once, the for loop. So I'm going to use the while loop uh, a bit like like that. And then after the break, we're going to see how we can change it to actually use the for loop. So let's get going with that example. So, like I said. Uh, well, I didn't say that, actually. Uh, we need a scanner to get user input. But like I said, here we go. Uh, I wanted to get random numbers. And to do that, I need to import java.util.random. So we have something called random. And that's basically a random generator that we can get numbers from. And then we want to do random math example. The math example is not random, but we're using random math. You know. Um, and then we do public static void main, and then we do uh, uh, this here, uh, the main one. And uh, then, as we usually do, uh, let's create a scanner called my uh, my scanner, like so. And uh, nothing new here. Let's yes, new scanner system dot n. And then we want to do something similar, actually. We have to do that for the random one. So we do my random generator equals new random. So that's basically a variable of type random. Um, and uh, then it's called my random generator because I give it that name. And then somehow we're creating a new random generator by doing that. But like I've said before, it's not part of this course. Uh, it's actually the next course what's going on here. But just for now, we're somehow creating a new random generator object there that we can, can store in our variable. So, so right, so after that we want, um, so basically this example, what, what, what it's going to do is it's going to ask the, the user five math questions. They are going to be very simple, it's just a normal addition. And um, if you fail one, you, you, you're out, basically. And if you manage to solve them all, then you sort of yeah, then you solve them all and then 
uh, you get the score of 5. So it's nothing too complex, it's just an example to, sh uh, to show how things work. So we're, we're going to um, start with solved questions at zero, because in the start you haven't solved any questions, obviously. And then uh, as long as we haven't solved five questions, so, so when solved question is less than five, then we're going to loop. And first of all, we might want to print out how many uh, questions the user have already solved. So we do, you have... Um, Oh well, we can uh, we can we can print out how many questions there are left. I think that's better. So so how many left to to answer? So then we do solve questions uh, like that. So so if you have so if you haven't solved any questions, then you obviously have all five left. If you've solved all but one question, then you obviously have one question left. So we just do five minus the the, the solved questions. And the reason why I put this in a, in a group of parentheses here is because we want uh, this to be the be done with two integers. So we have one integer uh, minus another integer instead of uh, concatenating this string with with a five to get another string and then trying to use one string in there and uh, subtract an integer from that. You can't do that, that's going to give us an error. So we have to make sure that it is first going to calculate the integer there and then going to concatenate it together with the string. Uh, so it, it just, it's uh, just doing that. Well, well, it's important because otherwise it wouldn't work. You have a question left, there you go. Um, so that's going to print out how many questions we have left. Like that, and then we can get the numbers. Um, and the questions are going to be quite simple. Uh, they w it will basically be addition between two uh, two numbers. So, um, um, but to make it a bit tricky, they will be from zero to um, from zero to ninety nine. So if we top hundred there, so next int, uh, that's going to give us a one random number that is from zero. It can be zero, and it can be all the way up to 99, so it can also be 99, it can't be 100. But, well, I guess if we want to uh, make it 100, we can do plus one there. So now, instead of giving us from zero to to uh, 99, we get one to 100, so that, that's optional what you want to have. Get two numbers, and then we can type that we get them from one uh, to 100 there. And that's just because I add one there, so instead of going from zero to 99, we get from one to 100. So there you go, and then we want to print out the question, obviously. It's tricky to answer the question if you if you don't have it. And then do what is, and then we then we just print out the question here. Number one, and then we want to add it like that, and then uh, the number two, uh, like so. So you're supposed to calculate that one. So so it's not really a big, uh, well, a, a large amount of questions you can get. Um, well, there are a lot of different numbers, but it's just one uh, one uh, type of question there. And then we obviously want to get what the user answers with the, the scanner we created. Get the user's answer. And we obviously want to uh, uh, compare it with the proper answer. There you go. So to do so, we do uh, the normal thing, my scanner.nextend. Um, like that. And uh, yeah, just check if it's correct. And now when we're coding, it's very easy to check if it's correct. We don't have to, to add them together on our own. We can just, well, computer, please add them together. So the user enters the, uh, the answer here that it thinks is correct. Uh, we store that in answer, and then we just check if answer equals number one plus number two, because that's what the question is. We don't have any complex questions. We know that we only have number one plus number two. Like and if that's the case, then we want to print out, well, you ha you, you're you correct. That, that's, that's very good of you. Um, and well, we can, we can be nice and say good job as well. But of course, we solved a question, so increase in, increase that sold uh, questions and e there, and then we can just add a comment there. Um, increase com people questions. So so as you can see, um, this is the condition of the loop. Uh, we loop while we haven't solved th uh, five questions, 
And uh, if we if we solve a question, then we obviously have to tell it that we have uh, managed to solve a question. Otherwise, we would never exit out the loop. Um, we will just be co uh, continue and continue to, to answer the questions. But we will actually have another way of exiting out the loop. And that's if you fail. You're not allowed to continue if you f fail, so you're out as soon as you fail. And then we do, ouch, you failed, because why not? There you go. And a break. There you go. So we will exit out the loop if we have solved all the questions, or if we uh, here you go if we failed. If we failed the question, then we're going to break out the loop, and then we can print out in the end. You managed to solve, and then just the amount of questions the user uh, solved there. Uh, yeah, we can type out of uh, five as well. And uh, oh, questions as well. There you go. <laughs> Silly. Um, and then we hit compile. Save that. And I have that already, but never mind. And I have an error here. And um, then we can read here. So it can't find the symbol solved questions. And that's because I misspelled it there in these two scenarios. I wanted to have it as solved questions, but I typed solved question. And the error was he obviously because it couldn't find something called solve questions but the error in my code was here because I called it something else here so errors might be somewhere else entirely uh, compared to compared to what the compiler says uh, which might be a bit annoying uh, at times so there you go it, it uh, uh, compiled fine and then we have five questions left so what is 1 plus fif uh, 14 that's 15 uh, what is 1 plus, uh, no, not 1, 2 plus uh, 100, there you go, 24 plus 48, that's uh, 72, uh, what is 28 plus 89, uh, well, what's that, that's like 117, right, no, I failed, um, so there you go, I failed, and it says you managed to solve 3 out of 5 questions, and um, that's because we hit this point here where it says break, um, and therefore we're going to break out and just uh, ignore the rest of the loop entirely and therefore we get here right away if if uh, we, we run it like that uh, and uh, I actually solve it which uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem if I actually concentrate and then we do um, uh, 93 and then here we go why did I use so high numbers um, that's correct, right? Yes, it is. And then we do 136, and all of a sudden, that's correct. Good job. You managed to solve five out of five questions. So the reason why we we uh, we uh, finished the loop this time was because the condition here was true. So here we have an example where we the condition here is true, and therefore we go uh, end up here. But in some rare occasions, we might want to break out otherwise as well. That doesn't have anything to do with the condition itself, which is if you fail, because if you fail, you're not allowed to continue answering the questions. And each time you answer a question correct, you increase this amount here. So we're actually using this loop to loop through a specific amount of times. And if we know the amount of times we want to loop through, and well, we, we can change that amount by breaking out early, but if we know the amount we usually want, uh, then we can use something called a for loop. But that's going to be discussed after the break. So see you in about 15 minutes.